Ahead on NFL Game Pass Film Session. Ahead on NFL Game Pass Film Session. Super Bowl champion head coach Doug Peterson joins a pair of former Eagles. Just kind of diagram like the staple day one. Quarterback Ron Jaworski and offensive lineman Brian Baldinger, who spent a combined 26 years in the NFL. Together, they break down a staple of the Eagles' offense, the run-pass option. This is the, like, if, if this is kind of the nuts and bolts of what an RPO really yeah. is. He put it in the belly of Clement, took it back, and fired 10 yards to Aguilar for the touchdown. Let's go for it right here. Go for it right here. Then, the mentality behind Peterson's aggressive play call. My career has always been one of an underdog, mm -hmm. one of... I've had to fight and scratch and claw for everything I've earned in this yeah. league. And the keys to the Philly special. You gotta let the, the, the snap and then the, the action toss, you gotta let all that kind of develop. Brooklyn tight end that throws in the end zone, touchdown! The Philadelphia Eagles are Super Bowl champions! Fletch! Hey, World champ, baby. World champ, man. Love you. We are bringing back the Lombardi Trophy to Philadelphia. Coach, world champion coach, I, I might add, uh, welcome to the film session here. And obviously in the office of the legendary Steve Sable here at NFL Films. Well, thank you guys, man. Thank, thank you for thank having me here. You, you know what? You, you you can't help but soak up football. No, it's, 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 right? it's all This out. is great. Yeah, that's it. This is great. And we've captured a lot of, uh, a lot of his former coaches and champion coaches, Doug. So you fit right in right now. You've got your, you got your spot right here. <laughs> I'm yeah. looking forward to this. All right. With that, Doug, I think we're ready to start our first film session. Yeah, that's great. Let's jump into it. this yeah, thing. Here. Let's do it. Let's talk a little bit more in depth, Doug, about the whole RPO and how you kind of teach it, basic installation, what it is. People will hear about it. I think they don't really understand exactly what you're asking your offense or your quarterback to do. You know, obviously, run pass option. Mm -hmm. We really don't want the quarterback to run. I mean, yeah. that is a third element yep. of the whole thing, mm -hmm. but really it's give, throw. That's, that's kind of what yep. we want our quarterback to do. The mentality to the RPO is if you let the Sean Lees and Luke Keekleys and, you know, some of these linebackers just go play, they'll make every play, though. They, they'll they will ruin wreck your game. Your game. Yeah. You know, they will wreck your ball game. Yeah. And, and so for us, it's a, it's a great way. You can call it a high school offense. You can call it a college offense. Yeah. But it's making great use of what the defense is, is giving us, you know? It's take what the defense gives you mentality. That's what I was taught as a quarterback, yeah. and this is all we're doing. We're taking advantage of what the defense is presenting uh, at that particular time. Pass to Jeffrey, in for the touchdown! This is kind of the nuts and bolts of what an RPO really yeah. is. This is like the staple way, okay. the bubble slant, yep. right? Okay. We're on a slant here. We run a, a bubble slant up top. What I'm gonna do, I'll, I'll just kind of diagram like the staple day one install yep. play that we that we we put in. The, the biggest thing is on this particular play, we're, we're gonna try to run an inside zone play. From a blocking standpoint, we got enough hats for hats, and yep. we're we're just sort of double teaming our way up inside zone, giving the ball carrier the ball. What ends up happening, okay? Couple things. Number one, quarterback is going to read that linebacker. He's going to see where he is. So okay. in this in this particular configuration, he's he's kind of in this A gap area, what we call the A gap A B C D He'd outside. Be the Mike linebacker, Doug. Yeah, in that situation. So that's yeah. him. So we know as a quarterback, this safety is going to fill. Mm -hmm. Right. Somebody has to take this spot right yeah. here. So what we know is we're going to get rotation uh, to the front side. So okay. the quarterbacks know that pre snap. So now the quarterback has to read this guy and make a determination, is it a seven-man box or is it still a six-man box? Okay. If it stays a six-man box, right, six guys, four down linemen, two linebackers, then it becomes a give. The quarterback will give hat it all down. Hat. Just hat for hat and let's go. Wentz takes the snap, gives off to Matthews, and Matthews breaks a tackle and picks up six yards. Nice job, nice job. Good work, good work. The other part of this now, is when, when it's a true seven-man configuration. Now it's a true, now let's say this safety's all the way down, down in the box, okay? okay? So this safety's now in the middle of the field, right? And it becomes a true 
Now it becomes a true seven-man seven seven box. box. Now we have the numbers we want mm -hmm. to take advantage of the throw. And this is where the typical bubble slant. And now, now we're going to feel that defender right there from gotcha. the quarterback's perspective, okay? And and maybe even, you know, if he if he settles and they play zone, we'll throw it, right? If he attacks right here, then we're gonna throw the slant in behind. Well, Doug Peterson has done a phenomenal job with this football team, uh, just preparing them each and every week. And the way he goes about his game plan and attacking teams Hey, we're going to keep it going. We're going to keep it going, right? We keep it rolling. Let's go. If you're going to put this play in day, it's your day one install, this is what you teach. Yeah. You know, you're just going to teach the concept. Yeah. You know, we're not going to get all advanced on day one. Yeah. Right? Right. You're not going to throw trigonometry <laughs> when you haven't even done, right. you know, basic math. So this is the day one RPO install. One thing I thought was interesting about you, got, Doug, when you guys did throw it off this, is you threw some out cuts. Most teams are throwing an in cut. Correct. Off their RPOs, but you sort of changed that up a little bit. Correct. We changed it up a little bit, and this is one that we took advantage of. Um, you know, again, this is we run this play or this formation a lot. Yep. So three by one. I'm a I'm a big believer, and and I think you got to do this in the NFL. A lot of smart defensive coaches. Mm -hmm. Some of these unique formations, like this, is a unique formation, yep. especially when Zach Ertz yep. is on the backside yeah. singled up. You better have a run. You better have a throw. You might have a screen. Something off of the same look. Right. So you're not always presenting so the same play. So you're not giving that tendency. To the defense. So in this case, um, this was obviously an evolution of the RPO. A little bit of a box count. So yep. you, again, you can see you got five down linemen. We're running an inside zone scheme. You know, how are you going to get to that stack backer right there? Yeah. You're tough. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 It's He's hard. Protected. You're going to ask a big Brandon Brooks to get through there. It's tough. Yeah. It's tough. So this is Adjusting. where now the RPO comes in, and it's the quarterback's discretion on this one. We know 59 is going to be free. Yep. Right? And then and then it's the QB's discretion on, on where to go, uh, whether it's a give so, to Sproles or, or a throw. And he knows he's basically got a quick out from down he, below for Mertz. Yeah. 21 is yeah. soft and off. Yep. He right. knows he's, he's just going to be yeah. it's going to be a quick out. Yeah. Listen, and, and he's got to be committed to it. 120! Can't beat me. I'm gonna give it, no, I'm gonna throw it. Oh, wait, I gotta get yeah. it. You can't do it. Oh, you, you gotta get be committed. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, or it's gonna be a One little thing here, Doug, just like, just, you know, a little coaching point here is the back, if he's not getting it, he's gotta stay out of the way here. Now, it's the sprolls here, so it's a little bit easier for him to get out of the way, but like, you know, that's thing you want is any indecision by the back if he's gonna get it. So, one of the things that we do with our backs, and this is something that I learned being around Deuce, and being around guys that were with Chip Kelly. Yeah. One of the things the backs always did is that it, they disengage. Okay. So they go through their footwork, oh, I don't get the ball, now we disengage. Right. And we stay out of the way. Stay we out stay way. out of the play. Where would you rather be tonight? No place. <laughs> no place in the world. After a 13-year wait to have an NFC Championship game here, there is nothing like it. Gives you chills. That's why we coach and play, right? That's right. For a game like this, that's why we do it. Oh, takes the snap. He fires out to the near side, complete for the first down as he has Ertz. Down at the 10 yard line. Ertz. They scheme the nuts, dog. They scheme the nuts. Got us. Tell you what, this thing is really working well. This run pass option where Nick has an opportunity to read what they're doing defensively, and they've got another first down. I put this one in just because of the unique design off of this, Doug. Yeah. Um, because it's really clever. I mean, what you have Matt Collins doing right here. I mean, I, I don't know. You anticipate man coverage down here off the stack. Third, third, third one. one. Third yeah. one. Third one. Right. Short yard situation. They're, they're selling the run. But what made you, for Mac to do this, to just get this clean rub here, just kind of give the impression that the ball's coming? So... I hate to like toot my own horn, but this yeah. is one of the concepts I came up with. Yeah. And just you just watch so much tape, and mm -hmm. you understand what teams are They're doing, to do. and especially in third and one situations. Yeah. Again, this is a called run. This is a this is a route combination down here. Yeah. Right. We yeah. Put, sure. We put a it's, a it's a pick it's a glorified pick yeah. scheme. Is yeah. what it is. We ran a ton of this formation uh, all season long. Okay. So we, again, we presented the defense with the same look. We wanted them to understand that we were coming back with the exact same plays yep. that we had run earlier in the game. So now we're in a third and one situation. 22 right now has no clue really what's coming. No. By by scheme, by design, you by, seeing a, you by seeing play Collins call. Come he's right see, at he's him seeing everybody coming at him. So 
Mac's a little flat, okay? okay. He needs to work Ooh. with that near shoulder, okay. right? But he does a great job of just turning, kind of sticking his hip out just a little bit yeah. with his hands. Again, all coaching points that, that, that Mike Rowe did a great job with our receivers last year. And again, a third and one situation. Ertz is coming off the ball like he's attacking 22, right? Oh, now 22's eyes are here. He's late to the party. And then we can we can throw the ball to the flat. So, so this year, built-in LeGarrette Blunt run with this RPO option on option the outside. On the outside. It's phenomenal. Base, What's Nick Reed right here then? Yeah. He knows it's man coverage. We right. designed it. If it was zone, yeah. we're going to give it. Okay. Yeah. It's blitz and it's man. Yeah. It's, a, it's the throw all day. Make the defense wrong. Yeah. Pretty simple. Coach, you've, you've gotten this reputation as being an aggressive, go for it, sling it down the field, you know, roll your quarterback out, RPOs, go for it on a fourth down. And I always wonder, like, where does a coach get that mentality? I, you know, obviously you're with Mike Holmgren, you know, with Don Shula, Andy Reid. I look back to your days with the New York Knights and Mouse Davis and guys <laughs> like that, and Tim Markham, and all these guys that were like Legendary. these mad scientists, yeah. you know, with, with offense design. Right. Where did you kind of... Get your foundation of, of, of why you're aggressive offensively. You know, I, I've been asked that question. And, and honestly, I, I, I could probably put it on a couple different areas. One, I also played with guys like Brett Favre and Dan Marino. And these two guys had that killer instinct. Like, they're going to try to rip your heart out. <laughs> Let's get a drive going, man. Let's get a drive going and score some damn points. Get a touchdown. I was able to witness some of that as, as a player. You know, and plus my my career, my career has always been one of an underdog, mm -hmm. one of, mm -hmm. I've had to fight and scratch and claw for everything I've earned in this yeah. league. And I wouldn't trade it for any other any other way to get to where I'm go at to today. NFL Europe. Go to NFL Europe. Yeah, <laughs> you do, do that go. whole thing, NFL <laughs> Europe a couple times and play with the Ryan Fire. But, you know, also part of that is, I think just, just it's, it's who I am. It's who I am, my personality. Mm -hmm. I, I, I want to, rip people's hearts out i want to i want to win the football game and and that's the that's the head side that's the kind of the head knowledge and the heart knowledge that i have but there's a lot there's a little bit of analytics to go involved with this right. too yeah. i i study those situations and it's not always just go for the punt you know and, or, or go for the field goal it goes fourth and one here i'm going to take it all the way down we're going to time out go for it i'm going to go for it right the game yeah Fourth and two, probably kick it. Is it from the gut, or is it you've already kind of made those decisions on the field what you might do? You know, during the week. Yeah, Baldy, those decisions we we kind of make sure we have the answers to those decisions before we get to Sunday. Yeah. I want to make sure that we've we've turned a lot of stones over mm -hmm. during the process mm -hmm. of the week and my preparation and study. So now it's real time. Mm -hmm. I can either say yes, go for it, or no, let's punt or kick right. a field goal. Mm -hmm. um, but all those decisions are rehearsed during the week so that we can just, there's no blink on game day. Got to have it, fourth down, Jim, fourth down. Here we go. Got to have it, fourth down, offense. Let's go for it right here. Go for it right here. Part of my philosophy on fourth down, too, is I got I to gotta trust my guys. Yeah. Mm. I think sometimes people just don't, coaches, they don't trust their players enough. And, and for me, this kind of stuff, the yeah. players enjoy this yeah, stuff. Oh, yeah. oh, they do. Yeah. They love they... this stuff, and they want this kind of stuff. Oh, no. Nope. Hammer down. Great, great. We go timeout. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Bowles in the gun. Bowles. Moves to the run. It goes to run by the Clement. Reverses it. The pass goes into the end zone. And there it is. A touchdown by Big Philly specials, one of the great play calls of all time. You know, we all watched the play, witnessed it, you know, amazing execution. I mean, this is like one of the craziest points of the game before the half, it's fourth and one, and you go, yeah, Philly special, go for it. I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> it was just like, you know, it was like, a, it was like seven on seven out of practice. You know, your demeanor was amazing, and Nick was so calm, and that probably led to the outstanding execution. You know, and you're absolutely right. I had Philly special. Philly special was in our, our plus five red zone area. Yeah on our call sheet, yeah. but I had it like at the two, three yard line, <laughs> and I never, 
I, I did not it have it on fourth down. Fourth that down. was that was not that was not the thought was on fourth down. But you know, so the timeout gave us time to kind of step back and think. And Nick runs over, you know, to me, and and, and he just says, "Hey, hey, Philly, Philly." Yeah. Yeah. And I and I, look, I go, yeah. Yeah, I kind of like it. It makes sense. Let's do it. So, you know, so then I get back on the mic and I, you know, you hear me kind of going through a, a series of like, you know, pauses there. Yeah, let's do it. Let's, let's do it. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Here we go. Hold on. Hold on. Cup. Trying to make sure the wristband number was right. I want everything to be right. Sure, sure. You know, you the personnel. I got one shot at this deal. Make sure the personnel is right. Philly special. Ready? Philly special. Direct snap, and it goes to Clement, who gets it off to Burton, the tight end, who then throws in the end zone. Touchdown! Falls! Caught the ball! What did we just see? Let's go! Can we get, like, the where it came from, or was it your design, Doug? <laughs> no, it wasn't my design. So, Press Taylor, as an offensive quality control coach, we kind of what I had asked him to do was go through all the NFL tape from the week prior and just start building a catalog, yeah. you know, and, and whatever. So Ideas, you got, concepts. Yeah, you got 17 weeks of, of, of regular season football, and, and he's got all kinds of stuff in yeah. there, and one of them is just gadgets. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and so we went back, and, and uh, it was a 2016 16. season, Chicago Bears versus Minnesota, Minnesota Vikings in Minnesota, yep. and they ran it uh, at the, like the three-yard line. Oh. Here is an end around throw. Meredith throws right side. Barkley's in. Touchdown. Trickeration. Boom. Touchdown. It was, yep. it was wide open. Uh, and I go, yeah, I kind of like this play. That's okay. where it came from. Press, Press did a lot of the research on it. I buzzed through the tape on a Monday afternoon. I said, I want to, I'm going to go back through this. I want to find something. We need something that I can just pull out. Yeah. Whether, whether it be a fourth down or, you know, it could be a key moment in the game. And, and obviously, that's so much of that play, though, from. is Nick really kind of carrying out the action. The thing for us to make this look really more presentable was we use number 30 in the red zone plus five area quite yep. a bit. Yep. And we use him throughout the year so it looked down natural. in there. So now it looks natural to the defense. You know, we're in this formation a lot. Yep. Trey Burton's been in the game, you know, in this area. And so we wanted to make it look as real as possible. Nick is the one that sells this thing. And so you see him go through a, a, a series of like, verbal and, and hand signal communications like he's audibling the play and basically just gets over Lane and he just he just barks out Lane's name. Get out, get out. Lane, Lane! Lane, Lane. Yeah. And that's the cadence to Kelsey to snap the football. What's the coaching point with Nick right here once the ball's snapped? Because he really kind of sells it right there. He does. And what we told him right here was just just pause. Yeah. You know, it's like a like a two count. You got time. And then you got time. You gotta let the the, the yeah. snap and then the, the action toss, you gotta let all that kind of develop. develop. If you go too soon, that DN's gonna go with you. He, yeah. He's responsible for anything into the flat. Yeah. And so with this action right here, Nick does a great job of selling it, and then you know Trey makes a beautiful throw right here. And the reason Trey's in that position Former quarterback in yep. high school. He yep. was a baseball player at Florida. He knows how to throw the football, and he does a great job of just what I call a butterfly with sore feet. Just kind of floats, <laughs> just kind of floats one yeah. out there, you know. And Nick, being a former high school all-star yeah. basketball, basketball player, player, you know, uh, looks it all the way to the tuck. You know, again, it's uh, rest is history, as they say. Coach, you're not only the, the, the play caller, you're the head coach. You know, you're managing the entire football team. Was there a point, like, right around now, you're thinking, boy, you know, Brady's really hot today. We're going to need a lot of points. Does that come, come into your thinking of going for this as well? Yes, it you know, does. Yeah. It does. You got a legendary coach who, who can make adjustments on the run in, in, in Coach Bilicek. Obviously, you got one of the greatest, if not the greatest, quarterbacks in, in our league ever, you know, in Tom Brady, who can light up a scoreboard. Yeah. I had to stay ultra-aggressive. Yeah. I had to... Within reason, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. I, I didn't want to be, you know, goofy with it, but at the same time, plays like this had to, I, I think, had to be called uh, in order to give ourselves a chance to win yeah. this football game. The Eagles have won the Super Bowl. Oh my goodness! We did it! We did it! Congratulations, man! Congrats! Congratulations! Baldy? Yeah. Been great, man. Yeah. I learned well, a lot having the Super Bowl champion Philadelphia Eagles head coach here in the uh, film session. But, you know, it, it's been great, Doug, and we appreciate your time. And, you know, I think one of the things that me and Jaws love, and I think the fans are going to like, 
really enjoy is the level of detail that this that this stuff just yeah. doesn't happen right. and the details yeah. just keep getting thinner and thinner like the attention to it is what you're harping on all week long all week long and again we're, we're putting our players in successful situations this is this is the part of the game that I really enjoy is the game planning you know yeah. and, and but but teaching teaching mm -hmm. ball you know yeah. going out on the practice field and taking the concept from from paper, yep. you know, yep. pen to paper, and then putting it in a in, in a in a in a classroom setting, and then going executing it in the practice setting, and then in, uh, on the game game day. But we we practice these things. These are these, mm -hmm. these don't happen. And, and I'm big about the details and, and the fundamentals of the game. Yeah, Choke. I feel a lot smarter, Coach. Yeah. <laughs> thank, you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, man. Yep. Thank you.